Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains in Missouri, USA. Well, we have another shorts episode here today where I am trying to fix something that I messed up. It all started with this Tandy 102. Uh, this is the board from it that a friend of mine sent because he had a problem with it not booting and it was kind of centered around the fact that the battery had leaked, but it leaked under the silk screen and you couldn't really see it. And I've been working on that for a few weeks now on and off. Got about a dozen jumper wires, added several places. This was leaking from the AA pack. And it's booting now, but the, the problem we want to talk about today is related to the keyboard. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. They do circuit boards of all sizes. Small circuit boards, medium circuit boards. They can even assemble them for you. Be sure to check out their website and the fourth design contest, which is running right now. So head on over to PCBWay for all of your PCB needs. So he sent me a new keyboard ribbon cable because his old one wound up looking like this. And he got a hold of a secondhand cable and he sent that to me and I thought everything was fine. And then when I finally got the, the board booting and I went to try the keyboard, I had plugged it in a few times and I started noticing the fingers were separating. I thought, oh no, I've messed up his new cable, which was fine. What's the deal? And I traced that back to this connector on the keyboard side is kind of wacky. It's goofed up, and that's what's peeling up the fingers on the cables. Now, luckily, I have a connector I can salvage from another keyboard, which is rather sad and missing a key, and all these keys up here kind of don't all work right. You can hear the difference there. That's closer to right, and these are kind of spongy. At any rate, uh, when I get back to working on his board, I'll take this connector and put it on his keyboard. And that'll take care of that problem. But what do we do about this cable? You know, this one's not too bad, but how would we go about fixing it? That's what I've been pondering. Now, luckily, I do have another cable from a scrap board. So if nothing else, I will just substitute this good cable in. You can see they come from the factory with this kind of blue plastic stiffener glued to it. And on the end that got messed up, yep, that's peeled off of there. This is the new cable he sent. So at any, any rate, how do we go about fixing this? Well, I've been thinking about that. And I had this old circuit board laying around. It's just junk. And I cut this trace right here, which is kind of hard to see, and I peeled it back. And uh, then I stuck some Cap 10 tape on top of the trace, peeled it back again, put a drop of super glue under it, put the Cap 10 tape back down, and let that sit overnight. And lo and behold, it holds the trace down really, really good. Now, if I were going to solder on this, I wouldn't want to use super glue because when that's heated, it forms a very nasty vapor, uh, which you don't want to breathe in. So don't do that if you're going to be soldering on it. But for holding the trace down, that works really good. I'm sure if I tried really hard, I could break that loose, but I would have to try. So I think we might be able to get some super glue under the fingers on this ribbon and get them glued back down. But then our problems come to be, well, we want to keep them straight, right? And we want to keep them flat. And we don't want to get glue on anything there shouldn't be glue on. I think the first step will be to take some cap tan tape and put over all the fingers that are okay. And that way protect them from any super glue getting on them. And then I'll use a smaller piece to put on top of these fingers in this orientation so I can peel them back up to put some glue under it and fold them back down. And then I think I will go so far as to squeeze this in a vise and let it sit there 
you know, at least 12 hours till the super glue is fully cured. Then we'll take it back apart and see how it works. I have held down the subject of our experimentation here with some blue painter's tape to keep it from trying to sneak away from us. I'm going to have to do this with my naked eyeballs. So if you're opposed to eyeball nudity, please look away. Hide the children and all that. There we go. Now I will use a spudger to seal that down. Now I want to get rid of this excess tape so it's not causing us problems later. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now the tricky part here is Try to get these guys lined up. About how they should be. Down this edge like this. Okay. So now, that should keep our three loose fingers in position. Hopefully, I can peel this guy up. Yeah, they're not wanting to come with it. Well, that's unfortunate. Maybe if we go like that, and then like that. And I'm going to use the Scotchweld SF20. Uh, this is a good super glue, and I have it on hand. And um, it has the advantage of being water thin. So it should creep under the edge here and do a good job, hopefully. We will see. Okay, I've got my glue here. I'm using a piece of paper as a drop cloth. Got our ribbon cable taped down again. And I am going to try to use this spring hook as an applicator. Just get one drop of glue on there. Sneak it under here like this. Okay, now, kind of quickly, I need to pull this up, try to flip that around to the back side, and I just realized this vise has a slotted back jaw for round things, which isn't ideal. Okay, new plan. This is just some FR4 fiberglass. So it'll have a smooth surface on the, the back too. I will slip the fingers down like this. Just trying to press on the copper part. Tighten up the vise. Not super tight. Just enough to make sure those are flat. And we'll let it set like that and hopefully not glue the cap tan tape on the other side to the FR4. If I had been thinking, I would have put some Captan tape on the FR4, but that's what happens when you're improvising at the last second. Okay, we'll try to peel the Captan tape off of here and see what happens. Okay. Uh, we don't want to pull against the edge. It's more likely to peel things up that we don't want to peel up. So, okay, so that looks promising. And then in a similar way, scrape our protective piece off of here. Okay. Yeah, 
Okay, we've got one loose finger on the other side here, which I didn't see before. That's one of them that was protected. So I'll have to do the same thing there and glue that down. And my spare cable that was off the junk machine. Then I discovered that this plastic here, the stiffener, is coming loose. Which that may have been what caused my friend's issue here, actually. If you look at look at this, I think that probably came loose and when he tried to plug it in, it, it uh, balled this all up. And there's you know this is broken here, so we can't really do much about that anymore with a broken contact. But we can steal this shim right here and replace this one that's kind of smeared off of there i think well here we have our two flex cables that we repaired uh, this was my spare that the plastic stiffener started coming loose on glued those down took the fiberglass pin and went very gently over the fingers to clean them up and some very fine sandpaper on the edge there to make sure there was no lip. I'll show you that procedure here. Uh, this is the one for my friend. Uh, F for friend. That was clever, I thought. Thought of that all by myself. And then I also took uh, what was the, the blue strip from my friend's original uh, smashed cable. And I glued to here. It turns out that the blue part is actually a type of glue. So it all cleaned off of there. That feels pretty smooth on my spare cable. It was kind of bumpy on the edge there. That's not too bad. But still, I'll take some sandpaper, and this is 400 grit. And this is the finger side, and I'm just going to... Actually, I should drag away from the edge like this. Okay, that smoothed off that edge nicely. A little handheld shaky cam here. I had this board set up with a test harness already, so it was a convenient way to test our repaired flex cable. And I installed this carefully. It seemed to go fine. I put a piece of cap tan tape on here to remind myself to unplug it from this end rather than tempt fate by unplugging it from here, which is where we had the loose fingers and we'll go ahead and fire the test harness up and I'll jump back in when we get to the actual keyboard test here where we can see the key pressed on the little LCD. Here is our keyboard test. I will start on the top row of keys. Oops, if you press the caps key that's locked and it doesn't read the keys after that properly to unlock it there. Oops, same with the num lock. Okay, we have a nicely repaired flex cable. Awesome. Well, what is our conclusion here? We've been able to take a couple unusable flat flex cables and make them usable again. Um, they're not as robust as new, but they will work. And if you can't get a replacement, at least this will get you back in business. It is kind of tedious when like this one, you have several different fingers that are loose and you need to do them a few at a time, but you can get there. I found out that this Scotch SF20 uh, super glue was not the best type for this application. Uh, the SF actually stands for super fast. If you use the correct amount of glue, this will set in like five seconds. It's designed to like put a drop of it on a crack and it'll seep into a crack and then set up. Uh, regular liquid super glue like this would be better. However, this stuff is old and about the consistency of molasses, so it wouldn't work. Uh, but that's what I would suggest. I wound up using a little more glue than what I would for each joint. That way it would stay liquid longer and I could get it together and clamped and all that stuff. So 
I would say this is a feasible method for repairing flat flex cables when you don't have the opportunity to get a new one. I have unplugged and plugged in this particular connection here a few times, so it will hold up. I don't think it's going to hold up to, you know, two dozen insertions and removals, but it's good enough to get you going and you're not going to be taking this apart, you know, dozens of times anyhow. So give it a try. Uh, let me know what your results are and if you have any other ideas. Uh, like to say thanks to all my uh, patrons and people who help support the channel. Uh, it's very much appreciated. Questions or comments, leave them in the comments section down below. I would love to hear from you. And until next time, bye.